Yeah, I wanted to show you the Up River book, the untold stories of the Franklin activist world they're told now. The uh, environmental significance of that area has been grossly overstated. For 11 months of the year, uh, the Franklin River is nothing but a brown, uh, ditch, leech-ridden, uh, unattractive to the majority of people. The High Court handed down its split decision in Brisbane this morning. At the Tasmanian Wilderness Society headquarters in Hobart, the champagne flowed and so did the tears of joy. And it's just tremendous to know that the Franklin and Gordon Rivers will run free to the sea for all future generations to enjoy. But were, being in the wilderness was an amazing experience, but also being cut off from the rest of the world. We had no idea of the machinations that were taking place in Parliament, in the media, overseas, in the, in the scientific community. Awesome. The thing you win when you least expect it. And the thing is to just keep, keep there. And I, I showed that slide of the pelican with the frog halfway down its neck and the, the frog's got its hand around the pelican's neck. Never, ever, ever give up because, you know, you think it's too late, it's not too late. What we don't know on our side is, that, is the machinations and the fragility of the development in the first place that's already on shaky ground. And you know, that, that great movie, um, Chasing Coral, uh, you know, they show all this scientific evidence about, you know, sea temperatures rising, the, what's happening across the globe and you go, oh, it's too late, the planet's had it, you know. And then right at the end he says, but it's not too late. And he lists all the things that if we did it right now, including no new coal, which is a number one thing, there's a real lot of hope that we can save our beautiful reef, save our beautiful environment. That for every one person on the front line at the spearhead of, of that direct action, there's you know 20 people behind them and another 120 behind them and another 2,000 behind them. And if you're on the front line and you don't have that backup, it's not going to be effective. It's not. I, I really encourage everyone, if they're afraid of being in arrestable or confrontational situations, as many of us were on the Franklin, you know, 6,000 people registered, 500 were arrested. All right? So that's 5,500 other people that helped make that campaign happen. What I do now is make cups of tea and, and make sure that uh, people are fed and watered. And, you know, I was thinking last night, we had people in Hobart that went and did the shopping for us, that went and got the groceries, packed them up, gave them to the person who drove them to Strawn, who put them on the boat, who sent them up to us. Now, if we didn't have those people in Hobart shopping for our groceries once a fortnight, we couldn't have stayed there. <laughs> it's my next thing. <laughs> when the Adani camp happens, I'm going to make cups of tea for people.